And my friends, it's the 25th of March. And the Melbourne morning drizzle will clear and it'll become 23 degrees. Morning drizzle clearing, 23. I'll give you the other parts of our fair land after this spinning thing here. After this next bit of stuff. 19 and a half to 7. At 16 and a half to 7. And uh, that's Frankie Mills. And here's Eric Jupp. And he's pulling a few strings just to take us up to news time. Sydney's going to have sunny periods today with a top of 5 and 20, which is one more than tomato sauce. Adelaide fine 26, Brisbane fine 30, Darwin late storms 33, Alice Springs fine 38 and Canberra fine 28. Hobart mainly fine 23, Perth fine 28, Townsville fine 30, and ours once again morning drizzle with a clearing up later with a top of 23, which is less, it's going to be a 26 warm one today, but they've changed their mind. It's 16 to 7. This is the national news from the ABC, read by David Capewell. Port Phillip and Western Port Bay is variable wind of 10 knots or less, with wind tending southeasterly of similar strength with afternoon sea breezes and slight sea. Melbourne, a cool and cloudy morning with drizzle periods, followed by a fine, mild to warm and mostly sunny afternoon with light winds and bayside sea breezes. We can expect a top temperature of 23 degrees. It's 7 o'clock. Oh, my father knew Lloyd George. Oh, Lord George knew my father. What are we going to do about telecom, sir? You don't care. Well, I do. They wake me up in the morning and the machine is playing up funny. We're all going on computers. How do you argue with a computer? Well, you can't. Now, yesterday, the damn thing, well, it just went glonk. And today, it went ring, ring, hang up, ring, 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 hang up, ring, 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 hang up. No, well, you know, a fella came in. After ten minutes, a fella came on and said, I believe you've been having trouble. Uh, you know, and there's me having to go to the bathroom. I had to keep getting up all the time. Good job I've got a strong bladder muscle. It's um, one past seven the time. Can't city temp is... Yes, I'll have to do something about it. We've got to get rid of the computers. Who's going to join me in the fight against computers? Are you? No. Mm. You couldn't put your best foot forward, could you? <laughs> mm. Shoulders back. Now, come on, chest out. Look smart. Look smart. Posture. Remember your posture. Right, one past seven the time. I think I'll have to dice them all together. It'd be rather sad after such a long association. But, um... I think I'll die some all together. Go back to alarm clock. So, folks, um, if I'm late in the future, you'll know why. Well, have you got anything to report to me? No, I haven't got anything. No, anything at all. Oh, dear, dear. All right, off you go, sir. Go and whinge in the office, I think. Thank you. One and a half past seven. The oh, sorry. You've got some stuff there. Well, why didn't you give it to me? I just forgot about it. Well, come on, you forgot about it. God, you'll forget to dress one morning. Sometimes I think you do. It's uh, two, two past seven by time. Have you got black on this morning? Yeah, I've got black. I did ask you to wear black, if you remember. That's your own head. Have you? Oh, show me. Oh, yes, yes. It's uh, two past seven by time. Yes, yes, thank God. At 1300 feet per second, well, 1100 feet. He what did it? 100? What did he do? Hang on a second. Brown's father, Luke, I think. And come about that color street. Travels at 1300 feet per second. 1100 feet. 1100 feet, 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 feet. Oh, I see. <laughs> what do you mean 1100? Oh, 1300 feet per second. 
Oh, I see. Yes, oh, well, that's a slight misprint, I would say. I thought that you were going to say 32 feet per second per second, which is the body falling in a vacuum, you know, that sort of thing. Yes, yeah, slight misprint in today's age has been pointed out. Melbourne's fastest lift in the Commonwealth Bank, Collins Street, travels at 1,300 feet per second. <laughs> a hundred, a hundred feet a second within the speed limit. Yes, I think there's been a bit of a blow up there because the speed of sound, as you know, will work out slightly, slightly faster. I don't know how we got through that one. Mm. We didn't get it right, really, did we? A gentleman rang. Speak, love. Ah, oh, I see. Somebody rang to tell us that. Very good of you, sir. Did he send a 50-guinea entrance fee? No, he didn't. Oh, didn't he know that everything used on the air, they have to pay 50 guineas for? No, oh, well, never mind. Thank you, Rosemary, very much. And it's 27 minutes past seven. Um, I've got Peter Couchman coming down in a few moments uh, who will give us a summary of the cricket match in his programme tonight. <laughs> Many's the time I've been moved or inclined to write maybe a song about love in the words as they come to my mind and I send them along with my love Just me and a melody sailing peacefully along All was right with the world and me until love went wrong Just yesterday Page page two, that is. It's um, <laughs> 29 past seven. Casually dressed, I'm surviving, I guess. I guess only the time will tell. It don't really matter much where I go next, just as long as it turns out well. But it's easier said than trying to say goodbye. Um, 29 past um, 20, no it's not, it's 29 to 8 the time and um, trying to say goodbye that was Neil Sadaka or some people call him Sadaka, I don't think he minds as long as you get the checks right this is the ABC Breakfast Show and uh, we now have a, a cricket commentary by Peter ah <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, Peter Couchman is here with me, he's going to tell you what's on this morning and um I think we've got something about education on this morning, haven't we, Peter? Yes, actually, it's, it's quite an interesting one. We've got a, uh, a visiting Canadian fellow who's been visiting, Gary Pennington. He's been um, visiting for six months at the Ballarat College of Advanced Education. But in Canada, he pioneered a rather interesting new concept of community schools. This is not your private schools, but they're schools that remove the schools from the bureaucratic education system as such and hand them over to the communities. In other words, your local school is con controlled by the local community, parents, teachers, community groups and so on. And in many cases they actually took the schools out of the conventional formal school buildings and located them in more community style buildings and so on. And he wants to apply the same techniques now to higher education, to tertiary institutions and so on, to to hand them over to the community so that they can serve community, individual community needs better. Oh, that sounds a good idea. The mm. word de-schooling is used here. Is that um, um, specifically his word? Or it's probably that, uh, probably one of those Americanisms that mm, de they like to... One well, of those new words the Americans like to invent. My favourite uh, saying um, on education, um, I think Oscar Wilde is my favourite sayer on any subject. Oh. Um, of, uh, he did it very well, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> and I think it, it, it went... Um, 
his greatest um, his greatest interruption to his education was no, it was going to school or something. His great the greatest interruption to the learn to his learning was going education to school or something yes. like that. I can't yes. I can't remember the exact words. Yes. But it must have been Oscar Wilde. Well, of course, you know, in in some communities, say where you've got a strong ethnic community, they may want a heavy concentration on various activities or various subjects mm. and so on. Well, if the community mm. runs the school, mm. they can do that sort of thing. I wonder if this got anything to do with the um, with the sort of second thoughts of the of the mod methods of um, of teaching. Yes, well, I'd be interested to ask him that. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, because you've heard the, the new free too, schools yes. that are developing and so on. Yeah, no, yeah, no, not only that, but going back to the three R's. We've heard a lot oh, about this yes, lately yes. because um, because the uh, the new method hasn't worked in yes, all cases or something like yes. Listen, we've got a problem this morning too because they've suddenly popped Parliament on early. And so our oh. second interview, which was to be uh, about the personal emergency service, we're going to have to postpone from this morning to one morning next week. Um, Warren told everyone yesterday morning that we were oh, going to have it on this yeah, morning, yeah. but no, I we didn't know at that stage that Parliament was going to be starting at 10 o'clock this 10 morning, o'clock, so yeah. we've mm-hmm. been knocked out. Oh, I'm sorry about that, aren't you? Listen, I have something I have to ask you. I promised. Um, I I'm, promised a group of I'm very attractive 40, ladies. Uh, Forty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? What is it? People, don't embarrass me, please. Oh no, no, no! I promised a group of um, attractive ladies yesterday evening mm. that I would ask you how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going. I knew you were going. Well, I, I knew you were going to. Well, the thing is, as um, old as your nose and a little older than you. No, no, no. <laughs> the thing is, um, um, I have to. It, it's sort of very hazy because I was born on the Great Wall of China, and my father was lost up the Amazon when I was very young. You see, <laughs> and the point is that the Amazon is navigable up to a place called Manaus. Now, from there on, the memory gets rather hazy. <laughs> But well, one of them was absolutely um, convinced that both of your legs were in irons. They're not in irons, are they? No, 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 no. But I'd, 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 tell you, I'd tell you a secret. I have a very long memory, and I had um, uh, a very great deal of travelling around and experience at a very young age. And that is why uh, sometimes I talk about things that perhaps um, people of my age wouldn't normally know about, because um, I left school at the age of 15, um, actually. That was in 1942, when I went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat and uh, of course it means that um, I had a a great amount of experience from the age of 15 onwards and I didn't go back to school again until I was about 21 or 22 Uh see and that's the way I did it I left school at 15 I went to fight the war and when I'd won the war I went back to school again (laughs) and that is why people say oh he couldn't possibly know about so and so which of course I I do know about because um, I experienced things at 15 that normally people would have to wait until you know Mm. Well, they were astounded that you should have known about the Second World War. Oh, I was in the Second World War from 1942 right through. 1942, as a matter of fact, my first voyage to sea. I don't really often talk like this, and I wouldn't. You know, you're such a friendly little guy. (laughs) But my first first voyage to sea was the invasion of North Africa by the American First Army and Free French in 1942. And I was a deck boy on a troop carrier. That must have been an experience. Well, it was. It was jolly exciting. Um, uh, But to boys of 15, if you can remember back to 15, there's no no sort of sense of danger when you're that age. It's just sort of the adrenaline pump, and it's very exciting. Um, um, So really, I I was... I'd I'd have had to be convinced of that at 15, I think. (laughs) No, no, well, I didn't know where we were going. You see, you didn't know in those days when you stepped on a ship. I was articled to a ship, and I went to Liverpool... Um, I was. Um, I, I went on the ship. She was in dry dock at the time. And this is the latter end of '42. I didn't know where the thing was going. We went up to Gurick or Greenock or one of those places up in Scotland, picked up troops and just sailed. You didn't know where you were going until you were at sea. You see? When we learned we were going to uh, North Africa, uh, uh, we assumed that it was uh, some sort of an invasion, which it turned out to be. Okay. Our job was laying smoke screens. You're going to have thousands of 15-year-olds wanting to join the Navy. The prospect of going to sea and not knowing where you're going. This is a different sort of thing. People confuse the Navy with the Merchant Navy, you see. This is Mm. you can't join the Navy at 15, but in those days you could join the Merchant Navy at 15 as a a boy, Mm. you see. You had to continue your education. Mm. uh, Because if I'd stayed at sea, you see, I'd have had my own ship by now. and uh, I I often regret that uh, that, uh, I didn't do that. But uh, nevertheless, every payday, uh, (laughs) the pain gets less. Well, thank you very much for the interview, Peter. And uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> one of my ghastly secrets has been well, they, revealed. they wanted to know, you see. Well, you see, that is one story. That is one story I have. <laughs> now, I have another one, which is even more <laughs> attractive. <week. laughs> anyway, Pete, thank you very much indeed. And I did thank want you. to say that um, um, uh, I suppose we better tell the cricket fans that we do have this um, uh, cricket on tonight on television, don't we? You won't object to me saying that. Oh, no, no. But um, Pete's it's program... It's to eight, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. Pete's TDT program's been cut short tonight. Begins at half past seven as usual, but uh, at 7.45, uh, a cricket is coming through direct um, on satellite from England, the one-day game against, um, against the internationals. Um, I was going to say something about um, uh, uh, Peter Couchman hit the man from the Prudential. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all the best to you, Pete, and we'll see you later on. See you tomorrow morning. Yeah, forget what I told you about myself this morning, and, um, <laughs> and I'll try and think of a better one tomorrow. <laughs> the tempers are going to be 13 today. It's Republic Day in Italy, which has got nothing to do with our <laughs> few showers 13 forecast, but um, I presume there'll be Italian celebrations somewhere in the city of Melbourne. Uh, the trains, one of them is late this morning, 30 minutes late, now due at half past uh, nine. That's the Overlander. The other, the Southern Aurora, the Spirit of Progress and the Vinelander are all on time. Uh, we've had no reports of road accidents this morning, but uh, we advise you to dodge uh, this uh, Brighton Road and Chapel Street St Kilda intersection. Um, at the weekend, the coming weekend, the tramways board are going to re-rail the tracks there. But somebody who came in this morning through that area said that the work is going ahead already. I mean, not the tramways part of it, but the, the, the roadworks along there are going ahead and there are obstructions. So it's better, if you can, to avoid the intersection of Brighton Road and Chapel Street St Kilda. Uh, um, but at the weekend, uh, really avoid it because um, the tramways are going to do their stuff there. All right, 16 to 8. Well, we had a sort of a funny old programme this morning, haven't we? Yeah. Incidentally, that stuff I told you about my early life, it's all made up. I, I, um, and, you know, I pull people's legs and tell them stories like that because the, you know, they think uh, um, you've got to do something unusual or something. So, um, I was really um, born on a, a rubber plantation in, in Malaya and um, had some coloured adventures there. I'll try and think of a cover story in the next few hours. It's nearly news time, folks. Oh, folks! I've just been reminded of that banana boat that I was I was born on a banana plantation in uh, Jamaica. My father went broke because he threw away all the bent ones. <clears throat> right, it's news time, quarter to eight.